So here we are, it is special guest time. GG Swing Tips, George Gankus. What's thank up, you man? so much for your time on the George, show. Good to see you. Nice We've got to see you guys. Johnny Ruiz as well, who is the model golfer. Johnny, nice to see you. Qualifying school coming up soon as well, so we're going to be looking out for that. Now, look, G. G. Yeah. George, what do you call it? I don't even know. I don't even know. I've been in California like... for two and a half weeks and it's G <laughs> as opposed G's to George. G's fine with me. So, okay, look, there's certain things that you are looking for in the golf swing. Yes, we're sir. going to talk about two parts of the golf swing. Setup is the first one. Yeah. What sort of things are you looking for in the setup? Uh, in the setup, the first thing I'm looking for is balance points. Okay. Balance points meaning getting the armpits over the balls of the feet. So everybody's structured differently. Some people have short arms, long arms. Some people have longer legs. So all their geometry is always going to change. But what's really important uh, for me is getting the balls of the feet, kneecaps, armpits, line, and I'll demonstrate on Johnny. But this all in line. So. The problem is, is I see too many people with their armpits out in their toes, and what that does is it doesn't allow you to stay in that spine angle. You're always going to have to back up. When we back up, we're going to throw a loft at it, swing direction is going to change, contact's going to be bad. So number one is setup for me personally. And so you'll see a lot of guys getting here ready, and that also extends you up through the ball and you're adding loft, bad contact, all the rest. So setup and, and balance points are important. So, so we're looking at, you're talking here about sequencing and about getting that compression on the golf ball. It's difficult to do that if you're in poor setup. A hundred percent. You even see some of the best players in the world who have poor setup. And it looks good because they're set up like an athlete, but then they spring up through the ball and they throw loft. But all we know is you need solid contact, distance control, and controlling your curve to be a good player. Okay. So it doesn't mean it's efficient, it just means that you know, if you still can do that, you can still play golf. But I like efficiency, I like solid contact, max distance and all the rest. And it's interesting, if you've seen any of George's stuff on Instagram, you'll look at some of the guys and they may not look Let's necessarily, yeah, it, <laughs> it, it must look, you know, sometimes maybe a little rounded, rounded. but there's a, there's a reason for that. As you mentioned, you want to keep that balance point maybe a little back as opposed to getting forward. And forward. I think what we'll do in a minute, we'll take a look at what yeah. Johnny does and we'll, we'll sort of his bad talk through his bad <laughs> posture. And then we'll dive into his golf swing because he's got a great golf swing and, and some incredible speed. So it'd be interesting to see and show the viewers some of the some of the numbers for that sure. he's getting. Can you, well. can you put him in this poor posture yeah, for then? Sure. I'd love poor to. posture. It's good posture really guys. <laughs> well, the poor posture first off stems from the old timers. So the old timers would be standing straight up and down, their butts more under their heels and their armpits are over the balls of their feet. So they're sitting like on a bar stool, then all of a sudden they're moving into here. And so you see this short arm, the rotation, and that's what you'll see from a lot of my players, a lot of rotation, a lot of players say, how do you get your guys into this position? Well, if you're always, go ahead. So you say, so you're saying here, short yeah, arm, so you're saying that, that flex keeping it, it flex there. Flex rotated through the ball, yeah. which creates all, uh, uh, great balls through. The, I mean, you're obviously hitting better contact, better control of the curve and more solid. So anyways, as I get somebody in this, it looks better than like a Hogan or a Sam Snead or a Bobby Jones, but we know how they hit it. They all got here and we all got into this position. Yeah. So when that started is when we thought we knew a lot about posture, yeah. that we look better. Aesthetically, it looked a lot better and it does look better, but I like crappy posture into good posture, yeah. if that makes sense. So yeah. I like it into bad posture into good posture not good posture into bad posture. And this is all based on the person, isn't it? Everyone's gonna be a lot different. Yeah, so, so for instance, let's say somebody's super tall and they don't have long clubs. I get them a little wider because not that wide because now my hands are close to the ground and then somebody who's tall, why would I get them narrow so they have to bend over more? So there's some things I do for taller players. I round them, I get more knee bend, but their armpits are still over the balls of their feet because that's yeah. very important to me. Okay, okay. Let's see it on Johnny then. Johnny's dying to hit a few shots. He I can see he's, it. he's dying to hit a few. You can wind them up. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna look at is Johnny's armpits here are over the balls of his feet, okay? Now, if you look at his butt is more under his heel, stick your butt back real, yep, right there. Now, what Johnny would do is just take it to first parallel if, I, if he sat up here and I told him to stay in this posture, he'd fall on his face. So his first instinct would be to hump right under it and that's yeah. bringing swing direction out to the right face open. So now he's gonna have to do something with his hands to square it up. So um, that's something Johnny definitely doesn't. So Johnny, go ahead and set up in your, in your setup. And we look from this view, I'm very keen on this. I'm also keen on his balance points from the face view. I like to have his pelvis in the middle of his feet because a lot of times I'll see players with their pelvis forward and then as they go back, go back Johnny, they'll take it back and take it to the top. They'll move all the way over here and then they turn and they get stuck on their back foot. So go to start sitting on your back foot. Yeah, so Johnny doesn't do that. So it's hard for Johnny to do something yeah. that's not right. But for a lot of players that I see with their stacked pelvis, they tend to get back here and then they have to like push off and they get stuck back here. Not everybody, but a lot of people do. Then I'll see somebody with their pelvis back too much and they're getting stuck. So they have to push off trail leg and then they're wondering why they're so tilted 
through the ball and they can't turn. So those so are it's safe to say that we're looking for more of a rotational move. I do. I like to ball. keep the pelvis in, in, in between my feet. So it's more in between, more in between before I start pushing my divot forward, yeah. okay? okay? That's that's what I like because if I get that pelvis outside early, it's very hard to turn. And there's some good players who did it, but they have creating shot patterns that okay. are not optimal in my opinion. Johnny. Come on then, Johnny. One. You better hit one. <laughs> We've seen him hit some shots, but... Uh... This is pretty cool. Nice ball. Very nice. That's beautiful. So really, what so I, I think the key thing with this then, I suppose, for yourself, you really, the setup is so important for you because ultimately you want the player to be able to, to rotate hard because that's really gonna stabilize the face through the, through the hitting area. And if you can get them in a great posture that's gonna allow them to do that, then it's so much easier, isn't it? I 100% I agree. So I think that if you're not, you're always gonna be compensating to hold balance, yeah. okay? So you're seeing a lot of guys, I used to push people into the ball and see if they could rotate and bet they couldn't rotate. So I'd push kids into the ball and they'd be like this, and th there's no way you can rotate if you're on your toes. So, although from the top, the pressure does go to the outside left three toes before it goes to the heels, but if you're constantly moving in to the ball, it's very hard to turn. Okay, okay. So look, set up, absolutely. Just hit one more for us, Johnny. Let's get one more on the go, and then we'll talk about this transition, yeah? Yeah, for sure. Beautiful. Nice. Now, Very these nice. balls are limited flight balls, so they're going to they're gonna balloon a little bit yeah. more than those, okay? Yeah. Pretty What's good. the spin rate on that? Uh, let's go in spin rate, so let's just go into that. <laughs> It'll be a little high. Yeah. What's on your, what's your yard? Two nine, two nine on what, that one. What, but that's the guy who's standing with the driver. Ball, so. Well, no, some of it was him on that, for okay. sure. For sure. Okay. Yeah, he usually doesn't spin it that much. He usually has no spin. Okay. Is that a new driver? No. Hit one more. Last one. Just hit one. Just do you. Beautiful. Now look at the spin on that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah nice. a lot better, yeah. So that spin rate will be about 2,000. Yeah. What is it? Uh, 22. 22. Okay. 321 good. total, 172 ball speed, 121 beef. That's okay. That's Swing good. direction, 0. 0.0. Yeah, that's not bad. Interesting. Right, okay, transition. <laughs> that's okay. That's the, we can, you can live with that, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so transition, what, obviously, the, the bit in between the backswing and the downswing, yeah. what are you looking for? Okay, so let me steal a club, and then I'm going to do it to Johnny first. Okay, so where's the best camera? This one or over uh, we'll this one? Go, we'll go get down the line. Get them both. Okay, so if you look at, like, a player up to the top, they all have different structure up top. Some players go into an external shoulder rotation up top. So they're coming in and they're getting external. And then what that does is that stretches this muscle this way. So I at least see a lot of people who look pretty up here and go into a reverse stretch, which is called stretch short cycle. And they get a little steeper. So I like to set people up into an internal, this being internal, this being external. So when they get internal, a lot of people think you have to be crossed, but we also have forearm rotation. So we can still be in a position that looks like everybody wants, rather than being crossed like Johnny, which I don't mind crossed like Johnny because when you're crossed and you actually don't tug on this handle, it will shallow out, yeah. okay? So I show people a lot about if this is on my shoulder and I just turn and I have any width at all, the shaft is shallow. If I actually pull it off and then throw width, that thing's straight up and down. So as long as we don't pull it off the shoulder, we're gonna shallow it out. So I do a little demonstration. Just, just, just do that again with that, that drill action, because this is a really good drill for people okay. to do at home, isn't so, it? So of course, so if I just got here and I said, okay, this is my transition, it's more rotational. Then all of a sudden I have it here and I did that for real, I'm in this position, okay? If I have any slide, that shaft isn't turning. So now I can manipulate it with my arms and get it here and that's okay. Yeah. But the difference is, is that's not a natural motion. Yeah. I would never throw a ball like this and then turn. I would actually leave my arms alone and they'd come into this position. So you'll see everybody's palm straight up when they throw, but they're not trying to do that. It's yeah. their body's turning and that's making this thing go into an external rotation. So I'm trying to do it more natural. So you gotta be careful though when you're turning and your pelvis is back here and you start turning, you're gonna be stuck on your back foot. So I have positions of the pelvis in order to create the patterns I want. Yeah, so I like people a little bit more over the ball and then sitting, and then they can use their body to move through the shot. So they're shifting that pressure a little later than maybe. Yeah, but it's still pressure seen. still forward because the left side, I, I got the pelvis under you. It's not back here. Yeah. And then they're sitting. It's under you. And then the left side of the pelvis is lower, which means my spine's in this direction, which means I have to have right little bend to stay centered here. Then I can push even more pressure. So I'm not trying to push pressure right away. Even though it's okay, there's a lot of great players who did. I'm yep. not saying that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying it's first off, not as powerful. Yeah. Number two, it's, it's optimal to get the divot forward. So if that's what you're looking for from a beginner, start there, because I do that with a lot of players too. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with any of that. But when we talk about straight shallowing the club, for years I've done it with the arms, and now I've figured ways to do it without using hands and arms. So Johnny, go ahead and demonstrate. Yeah, we got a bit hit one, yeah. 
So we're gonna have Johnny go up to the top and we're gonna do a little pressure drill. So go top. So if you put your hands under here and start down, Johnny, there's no pressure on that shaft, okay? He doesn't put any pressure on my hand. Okay, do it again, Johnny. Go up top. Where's he feeling pressure? He's feeling pressure right here. Do it one more time, Johnny. Come down. So look at where the shaft went. From me leaving his arms up, that shaft went in that position. If Johnny goes to the top and tugs on the handle, tug on it, it's coming down, okay? Yeah. So I try and keep players not pushing or pulling their hands down. What that does is get the hand out on the baseline more or the arm on the baseline, the hand path moving out so and the it, shaft going back. It, I mean, this is absolutely perfect because if you think about what a lot of golfers will do, especially when they get on, on the range, maybe not so bad, but they're on the golf course, tee number one, they're in a competition, suddenly there's a bit of anxiety there and they start yanking on that handle, 100%. don't they? And pulling that handle down and they're in all sorts of trouble. They're never going to be able to replicate the shallowing they're getting on the drive. No, range. definitely not. You get it. Well, here's the deal. So if, if I actually was on a golf course and I've tried this for years is where I was like, oh, I look like Sergio. I look like Sergio, sick. And I'll hit the ball okay on the range, but then I got a tree that I got to go under and I got to draw it. And I'm like, should I use this shallowing move to go around this tree and under the tree? And now I'm starting to think about my height. You, you can't pull that off while you're trying to go under a tree and curve it and all the rest. Because we have different shots, half shots. So am I doing a half shot? It's a it's a half eight iron, you know what I mean? So yeah. there's, when do I shallow it, when do I rest? But yeah. if I just got here and I use my body the right way, everything happens by itself, and that's the goal. Yeah. We probably mention this every time we talk about starting a downswing, it, it has to come from the body, it has to come from the ground. You know, as soon as you start with these arms, then you're in. And it's, it's, it's interesting gone. that it's when people are trying to shallow, shallow this shaft, they're focusing so much on, on what's going on with these instead of, like you're saying, almost leaving these here and letting yeah, this you dictate, just did it perfect. Letting this you guys both shallow it perfect. I mean, I've seen you guys have beautiful golf swings. And I, I think more than anything, when you're trying to shallow the club, if you look at it from like uh, a Gary player or, or a Ben Hogan set it first. I mean, and we're trying to recreate the wheel. I mean, yeah. with 3D motion sensors, we get these and they say that there's form rotation, there's external rotation, flexion, and you know, you got some ulnar. And so when we look at all those things, we try and copy that, we replicate that, but that's all happening as a byproduct of what the body course, did, yeah. not of what our hands it's are doing. Not, so it's not that complicated, is it really? Well, yeah, it's not that complicated, <laughs> it but we be. make it, we make it. All right, so I'll tell you what, let's hit one more. Okay. And then we've got something else. Hopefully you guys are getting something out of this. There's some real good stuff here. And we've got one signature move that we want to look at after this. Good ball, Johnny. Nice. Yeah, good strong flight. Oh, again just on that out one. of range there, so just hit me another one if you could, sorry. Uh, we got we got the, we got the, we got the totals. That's good. Yeah, we just lost a little bit there, but okay. Yeah, 315 total, 173 ball speed. Didn't get your club at speed. It must have been low. All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trackman says too low. <laughs> All right. So what's this signature move? We've seen this on Instagram. Okay, I'm gonna do it, but I'm not gonna hit it because Johnny. Oh, oh come hit on, it. Jay. Oh, I'm <laughs> it, man. You guys want to see me hit one? Okay. There we go. So my first thing I do is I've always like did this as a drill when I was a kid. I turn and then I'd actually swing. We now for it. me personally, <laughs> we I was it. a bad driver of the ball. The reason I was a bad driver of the ball is because. I'm a good iron player. And the reason I'm a good iron player is that I'm a little bit shorter and I get into it and I get in the ground. And with the driver, I did that, I never got a full turn. So I'd be coming in with too much angle of attack and, and I'd be hitting obviously too much down. So the thing is, is when I go like this, it makes me have a full turn, number one. It gets my arm internal and then I just sit and turn on it. And what ends up happening is I create a lot more speed because I got a full turn, I'm standing up. So the key to, to creating speed is standing up and then getting down in the ground. So that's, I mean, you look at Aurora, you look at Sam Snead, you look at a lot of guys who, Tiger, all the guys who kill the ball, they all have a little bit of a down in the ground, which is creating the vertical pressure. So up, down, So up. I'm stretching, but, but also there's the stretch in the muscles, which also shallows it. So as I'm going up and I start to go down, I'm leaving that arm up, and that's a stretch that slings my arms in the ball. And so that's oh, what he's he's checking nice. it out, he's checking oh, it out. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Now don't get injured We won't yourself, tell everyone. Don't, don't injure myself. Don't injure yourself. Okay, so you I go off the day, first one. <laughs> and I shanked it. Okay, I gotta do one more. <laughs> That's still pretty high. 117, oh, yeah. first shot of the yeah, day. Yeah, 117. 117. Shot, first shot I of the day. I doubt that was 117. Okay, so we're gonna go one more. And I shanked it again. I got one more. I gotta go fast. How fast was that? <laughs> that one didn't get it. They were just out of yeah. zone there. All right. So now I gotta do one more because I gotta redeem myself. All right, I'm gonna slow down. We're on the first tee. Me against Johnny. <laughs> Okay, I snap hooked all three of those. Yeah, 117. These are pretty good. These are first shots of the day. First shots of the day. First shots of the day are <laughs> terrible. Sorry, right, guys. Johnny. I hack. Johnny, let's see it. Let's see it. Let's see it. Come on, Johnny. I want to see this move. So, we've so got Johnny will do it better than me right now. 
120 for Johnny normally when he's doing this. So I'm just going to make sure. about 126. So that, that's what, yeah, 120 when 120. he's doing a normal swing, maybe. Chris, I'll just give yourself Hang some space a, a little Johnny, bit Johnny, just come over here a sec. I'm just going to huh? ping you in here. So that's that's the only way we can get Johnny to go you up. Get the tea height again there, sorry. I'm All right, one. we're looking good. We're looking good. How far is that? 20, 25? 126. 126. 182 more. ball speed. Oh my god, I'm always get back in there. Get yes. there. <laughs> okay, so the uh, instructional content is now finished. <laughs> this is this is this ego is, time. This is for me against Johnny here one time. I'm gonna <laughs> this is one ego more. time. This is ego time. Oh, I can't hit your driver right now. <laughs> 117? 132. No. <laughs> <laughs> just out, just out. All right, look, guys. I oh, mean, we want to see you try that afterwards. We'll, we'll do it after. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, guys, look. Fantastic. Come in here, G. Okay, come back. It's been. Look, there's a lot of information there, but I think what it is, it's really important that you, you get a couple of things out of that. How important your setup is from what we're looking at from George. Go and check out some of his stuff to see, obviously, more details on this. But I think the main thing for us, Andy, is when we see people starting this downswing and they're yanking on the club, whether it's anxiety or it's just a, a, a poor learning almost, that is so damaging to your game. So just think about how you can leave the arms up, yeah? So yeah. think of all these different ways that you can of leaving those arms up. Leaving them up, but when you leave them up, don't leave them up by going like this, yeah. okay? So leave them up and keep your arm under you, okay? And then that'll spring. And don't leave them up by going like this, because that's what a lot of people will see them. I'm leaving them up and then, then you're stuck and that's what people talk about. Maybe but come and see maybe come and see him for a lesson, absolutely, you'll get it, you'll absolutely. get some hands on. But also I think the key thing is as well, with setup, maybe worry less about how it looks and get yourself in a position where you can function, I think, better. That's the key 100%, thing. hundred percent. So don't worry so much about making it look pretty. It's got to work and the balance point has to be right. So I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do another video straight after this and it's going to go straight onto meandmygolf.com and we're going to go through two of George's best drills that are going to help you with that transition and maybe okay, with the setup. Cool. Also, George, where if the guys uh, don't haven't seen you, where can they find out a bit more about you? We'll put the links in the description. Down okay, below. yeah. If you want to find me, you can check me out on YouTube. Uh, I give a lot of info out there. Uh, Instagram, obviously, um, a little bit on Twitter, and then I have a membership, GG Swings Tips membership site. We'll put that all down below in so, the okay. in there. And if you want to book a lesson, you have to book through Aaron Smith. Through Aaron Smith. <laughs> Aaron Smith. Yeah, exactly. He's the man. <laughs> okay, guys, leave any comments and questions down below, and good luck to Johnny this season as Thank well. Thank you guys. Good luck I appreciate here, Johnny. it. Thank you. Guys. Are awesome. Thanks. Good stuff, Johnny. Good job, well, Johnny. Well done.